There you go. Do you like me by Drill? The latest to be played on WECS, Willimantic. Welcome to the show in case you just tuned in. We're going to go to the line now and talk with Gabrielle Bear, who is uh, directing the latest production of Sweeney Todd, Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Good evening, Gabriel. How you doing, Mark? Do you want to? Do people call you Gabe or? Uh... Yeah, Gabriel Barry. Actually, my last name is pronounced Barry. It's spelled uh, B A R R E. Oh, okay. But uh, so not uncommon to pronounce it the way you did. But uh, I actually pronounce it Barry. All right, Barry. I, I grew up in Vermont, uh, where there's a town spelled B A R R E, but pronounced Barry. So it was never too odd to me till I moved out of Vermont and where where everyone pronounces it the other way. Ah. So. Um... Tell us a little bit about um, how long you've been directing. Is you've been directing for a while, or yeah, I have. Although I've also I'm also an actor and still uh, stay active uh, as an actor in theater and film and television. Um, but I've been directing more and more the last few years. In fact, one of the first shows I directed was here at the Goodspeed Opera House a couple of summers ago. A, a show called John and Jen, a two-person musical that moved into New York, and we just recorded on a CD and. Um, then last summer I directed uh, a show called Honky Tonk Highway there, which was a country musical performed by five actor musicians, and uh, this is my third directing job here at Goodspeed, and uh, one I'm most excited about. Oh, uh, definitely a good production, uh, Sweeney Todd. Do you find it uh, much more difficult to doing the directing than just being uh, one of the uh, players? Well, it's a good question. Actually, it it um, I do find it more involving. I mean, you're obviously responsible for a lot more, and that's one of the things I love about it, to tell you the truth. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been an actor for more than 20 years, a professional actor, and um, love that too, and still do it. I still um, uh, work as an actor, as I said, but um, uh, I love having more to say about a, a production and, and um, a moment. And Aha! Oh, you can hear it? <laughs> yes, <it's> beautiful. <laughs> Music to my ears. Um, yeah, I love I love uh, the whole process of directing and, and uh, envisioning a show. And as an actor, I've always tried to sort of second-guess directors. I just had the habit of sort of uh, imagining the production uh, that I might do or whatever and uh, trying to solve problems before they uh, did or c- come up with solutions um, of my own in my head just to sort of test myself, and uh, now I'm finally getting to exercise those muscles uh, on my own. It's great. I love it. Good. And you were you, you were in uh, an episode of, what, Kate and Nally once? Or? Yeah, I've done a lot of television and film. Um, I'm currently appearing in uh, Spike Lee's new film, Girls 6, which just came out. And that sounds like had, a good movie. Yeah, it, I, it, I it does it sound out. like a good movie. I haven't even seen the whole thing yet, but uh, <laughs> it's uh, pretty wild, and... Uh, so I've done, you know, small roles in big films and big roles in small films and some television and, and some Broadway and off-Broadway, a lot of that over the years. And um, really, I just, I really do love love performing, too. But um, What do you do for uh, Nickelodeon? Nickelodeon, I play a character called Silly Man, believe oh, it or no. not. And um, we did a series of vignettes that air between programming there in the on uh, the weekday mornings. So uh, that's something that's, I think, still airing uh, every every day here and there. Oh, good. Um, and tell us a little bit about Sweeney Todd. What what's the deal with Sweeney Todd, anyways? Why does he have a a last name for a first name and a first name for a last name? Do you, have, <laughs> do you, do you know anything about this? <laughs> well, actually, the the show Sweeney Todd is based on a real that is not a real story, but based on an uh, uh, a melodrama, a real play that was performed in 1847 in England mm. in a theater uh, there um, when the melodramas were popular. In fact, they called the theaters actually their blood tubs. They were it was sort of like horror theater. It was really wild, crazy stuff. The uh, theater in the mid-1800s, uh, 1800s in, in London was mainly attended by the working class and lower class uh, people. The, uh, the the aristocrats or the richer folks would stay home and read, or they'd go to the opera or whatever. But uh, generally, theater was was attended by by uh, hordes of sort of the uh, working and, and lower classes, and uh, so it was very sensationalist type stuff. 
and uh, inspired by uh, some news articles in a Penny Dreadful, sort of their version of the Inquirer of the time, a uh, playwright put together this show called Sweeney Todd, which was about a, a fictitious barber who uh, killed people, and uh, his landlady, Mrs. Lovett, baked them into pies uh, and sold them and uh, became very popular chef of, the, uh, of Fleet Street. And... Um, he wrote this melodrama based on that that story uh, in the, in the papers, and um, and it became very popular, and they received many productions throughout the rest of the uh, the nineteenth century in London. And Sweeney Todd became the sort of equivalent, uh, the Britain's equivalent to the Boogeyman. Parents would get their kids into bed by saying, "Be careful, uh, Sweeney will get you if you don't go to sleep," or whatever. Oh, no. <laughs> and um, it wasn't until nineteen seventy in London, uh, a young actor-writer named Christopher Bond, who was a member of a small theater company in London, who was reviving, uh, who were reviving uh, old melodramas. They picked up this script, and he added a few subplots to it, such as uh, uh, Sweeney Todd had a child, and he gave Sweeney a kind of, uh, well, justification, if that's the right word, a reason for his uh, madness, in a sense. Um, by creating the sort of subplot that a a judge, a corrupt judicial official, send sent Sweeney away for life to Australia on a trumped up charge just so he could have his way with Sweeney's wife. So Sweeney escapes and comes back 15 years later to London to discover his wife has been killed and uh, or is dead, and his daughter, who was a year old when he left, is now uh, the ward that is living with the judge who sent him away. So he vows uh, revenge on the judge. and So Christopher Bond added that uh, sort of uh, motivation to Sweeney's character and, and approached the show in a very, very sort of uh, more straightforward manner rather than the, the melodramatic uh, stylized version that had been done in the, in the 1900s. And uh, it was that production that uh, Stephen Sondheim saw in London and he decided to uh, musicalize it, which he did, of course, brilliantly. And uh, it was written, the musical was written in, in 1979 based on Christopher Bond's play or version of the melodrama. So that's sort of the his- brief history of the show itself. Yeah, um, sounds very exciting. It's got a better plot than most soap operas these it's days. A, oh, Mark, it's an incredible plot. The, <laughs> the characters are, are, are phenomenal. It, it totally is it would blow any soap opera out of the water. I mean, it's it's totally uh, uh, amazing, the, the intricacy of the story. It truly is a musical thriller, as they bill it. Um, uh, and it's the kind of story that keeps you on the edge of your seat, not only because of the events that happen, but because of the characters. And you really start to feel for and identify with all the characters in the show. And that's what makes it, I think, just a, a frankly, a masterpiece. It's one of the best shows, I think, written this century, wow. uh, for sure. And uh, it's got a great score, too. Well, the score is phenomenal. Sondheim, for those of you who uh, know his work, uh, I think we'll probably are familiar with Sweeney and know, and those of you who don't should should really catch it because it's 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 really quite amazing the way he paints with music and uh, I don't think there's any uh, composer at least living today who 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 can compare to him um, uh, in 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 what he does, which is just so unique and he always of course has uh, you know really unique ideas for shows which I think uh, is also incredible that he can sustain that kind of invention. You know, he wrote uh, recently a show called Assassins, which was about uh, uh, presidential uh, uh, assassins and would-be assassins, um, uh, somewhat from their point of view, in fact, and uh, it's a fascinating show. Um, Always kind of, uh, you know, uh, brave stuff, but, um, you know, that's what theater's about, I think, a lot of times should be. Did you hear the rumors that uh, Angela Lansbury is going to be quitting her show Murder, She Wrote? And uh, is it true that the rumors also state that uh, she's going to be coming to the Good Speed Opera House to take over the role of uh, Mrs. Lovett? Um, I can't, uh, uh, you know, uh, add uh, anything to that uh, rumor one way or the other, <laughs> really. No. Um, uh, I don't I don't think there's there's much uh, there's much truth to that. I think I think there's a chance she might come up and see the show, but I don't know if I'd do it. Um, uh, I'd be very surprised if that happened. Did but, you see uh, Did you see the uh, production when she uh, 
played Mrs. Lovett? I did. I was very fortunate to be in New York. I had just moved there from Vermont, where I went to high school, and I moved to New York to, to study acting, and I was a young acting student at the time and saw the original production of Sweeney Todd in 1979 on Broadway, where it played in a huge uh, theater. It was called the Eurus Theater. It's a big 3,000-seat theater, and the, the production was spellbinding, directed by Hal Prince, a uh, legendary director in the theater who's uh, still working miracles uh, with Phantom of the Opera and Showboat, and those are some of his recent shows. Uh, he's an amazing uh, man who I had the pleasure of working with last year. In fact, uh, he directed me in a show that we did in New York a new musical called The Petrified Prince. Oh. And uh, that was quite an experience. And um, uh, yes, I was there in New York when, when uh, she did the original production and um, was uh, blown away by it, as most people were. I mean, it was a stunning, stunning piece of theater that uh, I think most people involved, uh, some of whom I've met since then, thought at the time it was, was just going to be the biggest bomb <laughs> now, that were, usually yeah. turns out to be the case many times. People think that something's going to be terrible it ends up being great. It's so true, Mark. I mean, it's like, uh, it's, 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 that's what makes this business uh, fascinating, and one yeah. of the things it does, because you can never predict what an audience is going to feel about something. Right. And there is no formula that is foolproof. And there is, likewise... Uh, it's hard to predict what what people won't like, um, because uh, it takes this bizarre sort of alignment of ingredients and elements uh, to make a hit. And I'm not sure that everyone would qualify Sweeney Todd as a hit in, when it first played Broadway. Mm -hmm. um, financially, I don't I don't even know the records, the statistics, but it did play for a long time, and uh, m most everyone. Uh, certainly acknowledges it as a, a um, uh, you know, artistically a huge hit. I mean, that it was just, uh, a, you know, a formidable achievement. And I think inspired an awful lot of other shows since then uh, that are darker in nature and uh, just uh, the shows like Phantom and Les Mis and so on that are, that, that are, I think Sweeney had a big part in in saying that musicals didn't all have to be bright and cheery and rosy cheeked and and uh, you know sort of goody goody kind of shows. Mm -hmm. And um, it's for that reason also that I think it's really brave and wonderful of the Goodspeed Opera House, who um, some might regard as as having done those kind of shows a lot and, and sort of relying on them brave of them to sort of branch out. This is the first uh, Sondheim show, for instance, they've ever done here. Oh. Um, and um, I think it's well within their sort of, uh, you know, what what they devote themselves to. That is to say, I think Sweeney qualifies as an American classic. It's almost 20 years old, after all. And uh, uh, as I said, one of the best pieces uh, written. Um, but it's also very brave of them to, to do something like this, I think. And... Uh, I think uh, says a lot about the theater and uh, and 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 uh, just makes me want to say you know to to folks that haven't ch checked out the good speed to to do so because there's some some great stuff happening here and this show is 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 going to be a good example of that the the, the fact that they're doing new stuff and trying new things and uh, our approach to this production which they've uh, obviously supported and been very much a part of is going to, um, I think, be a very fresh look at this show. Um, and uh, it's going to be an approach that involves the the, uh, the whole uh, theater space, which uh, I don't know if your listeners know, um, is uh, in fact an old Victorian opera house. It was built in 1876. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous little theater. It seats about 400 people. It's a it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, space to perform this show in because you can really imagine uh, uh, the these people who are telling the story <clears throat> living at the time of this theater. Right. Um, it's really uh, kind of breathtaking, actually, to, to uh, feel and hear and see the material in in, in this context. It uh, adds, a, I think, a lot of resonance to it. <clears throat> so it's really cool. And the show itself is just a blast, <clears throat> you know, in uh, 
almost any production. There's just so many uh, wonderful moments in it. It's a it's a it's a it's a thrill packed evening. It's, and it's a it's very schizophrenic as well. <laughs> It's sort of like uh, it's melodramatic. Uh, one moment that is in the best uh, sense in the word of uh, just a great story with great characters, and the, and farcical the next moment, and uh, uh, then sort of embracing the whole horror theater or grand guignol aspects of the show. Uh, the next minute with uh, you know murders and blood and, and, you don't and gore have to go and lots to of New fun. York. And you, don't, and you don't have to go to New York to see it all. It's right in our backyard in East Haddam, right? Absolutely. And, you know, I learned the other day something that I was fascinated by. This is the first professional theater production of Sweeney Todd in Connecticut, in which I was just huh. uh, amazed of. I'm not surprised, because I've always, I've always said to myself, if it ever comes to Connecticut, I'm going to go see it. Well, you've got to check it out, because it's... it's um, it's a great show, and I'm 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 actually surprised the number of people who don't know much about it or haven't heard of it even, um, you know, uh, because, uh, and and I'm not I'm, I'm I'm half surprised and half not surprised because again it's not your classic uh, American show like Annie, which also started here at Goodspeed and is is also going to be done uh, revived this year because it's uh, it's 20th anniversary, oh. and that's going to be uh, done later this season at Goodspeed. Um, but this show is very different from that in that it's, uh, you know, one might say sort of a brave topic or whatever. Um, but I think that's one of the wonderfully disarming things about it and um, about the show is that uh, you actually find yourself uh, laughing at these characters, uh, enjoying the sort of black comedy aspects of the show, and believe it or not, understanding them, which is kind of the really scary thing. But uh, what I think... M- some ways makes the show more appropriate today than it was in 1979 uh, when it was first written and presented in New York. By that I mean I think the parallels between the dawn of the technological age here in 1996 is much closer to the the dawn of the uh, industrial revolution in the mid 19th century in London than uh, than than 1979 was. It's uh, it's kind of fascinating actually the confusion and chaos that that we are all feel day-to-day living in our cities and, and uh, towns in this country is very close to what they were feeling in uh, London uh, in 1840 when the show takes place. And uh, we begin to sense that um, with all that we've learned and all that um, we've invented and all that we've been able to control in the last uh, 150 years, there's an awful lot that's still the same. And... Uh, that's both horrifying and perhaps, um, uh, well, maybe even relieving in some ways. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, in any case, I think it's a, it's a wonderful. Uh, so basically, we should uh, beware if we see a, a new pie shop opened up in town ah! with, a, with a barber shop <laughs> next to it. There is a lot of bakeries here in East Haddam, and uh, <laughs> you know, I always wonder why they're so popular. Hmm. Um, yeah, well. Um, Obviously, the show is is an entertainment first, and yeah. it's uh, foremost uh, succeeds on that level alone. There is a message to the show, I guess, if you wanted to to make one, and that is, and, and that I think also is very important to hear today. And the the message being that um, you have to kind of learn to let go. And uh, Sweeney Todd is an example that the that the ensemble uh, makes by telling the story of what not to do in a way. He uh, has every reason to be enraged, but um, takes it a bit too far and uh, ends up destroying himself and everyone around him. And uh, they make the point, that is, the show makes the point, that that's what will happen if you can't can't somehow uh, maintain perspective and let it go. And that's certainly good to be reminded of, I think, these days. Yeah. It's very hard very hard to be alive today and not feel enraged the way, frankly, Sweeney was. Mm. Um, so I think it's a really uh, um, interesting show that way because uh, it succeeds on all those levels, I think. Uh, the material and, and the, uh, our approach to it certainly is embracing uh, those notions um, head-on, and I think will be it'll be a really neat event, actually. Mm, we can definitely relate to that. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
Now, how long is it going to be running down at the Goodspeed? We open on April 10th at uh, Goodspeed Opera House. Uh, by the way, I don't know if you have the box office number. I might as well say it now. It's uh, 860-873-8668. And we open April 10th, and it runs through June 21st. So there's a three-month run here. And we have, by the way, an incredible cast that you wouldn't see in just any professional production either. Mm -hmm. uh, heading the cast is a guy named Timothy Nolan. He played the role uh, at the New York City Opera under the direction of Hal Prince, who directed the show originally, as I've said. Oh. He also played the role at the Houston Grand Opera and in Chicago and in a production in Israel even. So we're real lucky to have him uh, heading the cast uh, here at Goodspeed, and he is, uh, he's a mind-blower, I'm telling you. He's, he has an incredible voice. He's a wonderful actor and uh, just a, it's a riveting performance. So anyway, come have your socks knocked off by him <laughs> and the rest of the cast, uh, who are all amazing singers and actors, uh, well worth uh, seeing in any show. And uh, I'm following the Thursday performances on uh, certain dates. You're going to be having uh, backstage at Goodspeed where uh, people come out and uh, ask questions, right? Yeah, absolutely. And there'll be a lot of fun questions, too. Uh, I know if I saw the show, I'd have tons of questions. Uh, the show is <laughs> really complicated technically to, to do, especially in the Goodspeed stage, which uh, any of your listeners who may have been here before might uh, realize is is a real actually very intimate wonderful space but it comes with limitations in terms of it's not a high class super um well it's high class but it's not a superly uh, technological technologically advanced space in other words it's not it's not there's no wing space there's no fly space there's no trap space it's it's basically you know four walls and mm. um and a stage which is which I kind of love. I mean, I, I love those kind of limitations, but the show is very complicated technically with a, a, a chair that has to dump bodies down a chute and all kinds of stuff. So it'll be f fun for audiences to come and see that and see how we solve the unique uh, complications or, or, or challenges that the show presents. And uh, so uh, in those question and answer periods, I'll have a chance to ask how everything works and how we develop the our our production, which is, uh, as I said, uh, has to be quite unique to conform to the needs of the script and the space. Mm. I'll make sure that I come down on a Thursday so I can have yeah, sure plenty of questions. Yeah, <laughs> no, it, it, it'll be fun. Mm. If anybody wants to ride down the chair, we'll let them do that, too. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't cut my throat before you go down. That's right. <laughs> Well, sorry to take you away from the uh, the basketball game. Uh, oh yeah, well, it's probably over by now. I can't wait to figure out who won. I know that was it, it was There's an more amazing suspense game. in that than the uh, the show. What's that? There's more suspense in the game here than the show. Well, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> there's a, there's a lot of suspense in the there in is. the show, but um, but yeah, it it is pretty amazing. You you realize why um, you know Stallone hit on uh, Rocky. You know, I think he was like in a. Uh, in a boxing match or something, he said, God, if I could just put this on the screen, this tension in a sports uh, thing and uh, an event, um, mm -hmm. it is it is pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, I, let's hope they won. Do you um, think the, there should be a musical about maybe a women's basketball team? <laughs> I, 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 I could imagine that somebody would be singing, There goes Lobo toward the net, and two <laughs> points doth she get. It would be, be a great musical. I can see it. I can see I'll it listen. Now. You know, I stopped guessing what might be good subject material for a musical and what might not, especially after shows like Sweeney Todd. Mm. You, you can't say anymore. You know, look at Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, how ridiculous a musical made out of about a show uh, about a man-eating plant or whatever. <laughs> and it's a wonderful show. It's yeah. just great, and it's, as Sweeney Todd is. So, so you never know. I have some friends that were working on a musical about the Texas cheerleader mom. Oh, no. You know that... that that story down in Texas, <laughs> where she, uh, Mom hired a killer to to uh, wipe out her daughter's competition for the cheerleaders. Oh my God! Terrible. So story. you just never know. You know. Um, but there's lessons to be learned in life, and that's what um, um, you know. Theater draws on, I guess, is is life itself. That's what all art forms really have to draw on. Right. So it's uh, not surprising, I guess.
All right. Well, thank you, Gabriel. Mark, and, uh, a great pleasure meeting you, and I uh, hope you can all check out the show at, uh, at good speed. It's going to be a lot of fun, and um, I think you'll have a good time. If you and come. we will. That off- office number again, box office number is uh, 860-873-8668. Thanks a lot, Mark. All right. Thank you. It's, can you stay on the line? Sure. All right.